Ask Reddit by SNSBNS. What is a step in food recipes that you always skip? Their life story. When I was a young boy my grandma used to make this sweet rice. She would go to the garden and look at the flowers. Oh she was so pretty with her smile. So she would pick some flowers for the dinner table and it would be some delightful for the whole family. Anyways, you boil some water and throw some rice in and you're done. Sorry but I don't have that one exotic ingredient that costs 20 bucks and can only be used once. I love cooking. I cook compulsively and adventurously. I am the awful person who owns 8 different vinegars and 3 kinds of salt and can justify it. However, someone bought me a not a lengthy book this year that opens with a shopping list of essentials like rose irisa paste and a specific shop in London that you can buy them from, and it turns out that can fuck all the way off. Adding garlic and onion at the same time. That's just a recipe for burnt garlic. This is how I detect bad recipes. Seasonings. I feel like the amount mentioned are suggestions. I will always, without fail, add more garlic. Recipe, lightly wave a cut clove of garlic 100 miles from pot. Me, add head of garlic. I ignore the suggested measurements for cooking, and have enough experience to be able to guess how much. Baking, I weigh using a gram scale. The first time I made pretzels I weighed everything to be safe and the recipe was off by like 3 cups of flour. All of the 1 star reviews you could tell measured by volume. For soups, I skip the veggie amount and just use the whole thing of whatever I have 1 stroke to cut onion. No, the entire onion is going in 3 sticks celery. No, using however much is in the fridge. It'll be fine. Are you my mom? She is the queen of using up stuff in soups. She leave and throw in salad dressing from the almost empty bottles. I only sift flour if I feel it needs it, and it rarely does. Lol. This drives some purists nuts, but it honestly hasn't affected anything I baked. The only reason my grandma ever sifted flour was to remove the weevils. There's never enough seasoning in many online blog mom recipes, so I almost always add more or different kinds. I doubled the paprika and tripled the garlic. And I baked it for 20 minutes instead of 25. Oh, and I used turkey instead of beef, and milk instead of stock. Great recipe, 5 stars. Only adding 1-2 cloves of garlic. There are no limits to this. No recipe can dictate how much garlic I add. I simply keep cutting until the spirits tell to stop. You cut garlic? You monster. You either crush and chop or grate it, or press it, but yuck. I'm still kinda miffed at a recipe I found years ago. According to the recipe I had to finely chop the chocolate, before melting it and mixing it into the brownie batter. No way am I spending time chopping and getting a chopping board and knife dirty in order to chop up chocolate I'm then gonna melt anyway. It was probably to make it melt faster and save time. Which is completely nullified by having to add in the whole extra step of chopping it. Just break the bar with your fingers as you add it to the double boiler. Best of both worlds. Skinning potatoes. They are so much tastier with the skin still there, whether whole or mashed. I feel healthier when I leave the skin on since at least I'm getting a little bit of fiber. Boiling the water. I always use the kettle and pour the hot water in the pan when I make spaghetti. Just accidentally did a side by side timed experiment, kid asked for packet ramen, spouse 1 put on a small saucepan of water, spouse 2 didn't realize and put an equal amount on in the electric kettle. When we both realized. We figured we'd let both go and see. Kettle was faster by far. Start cooking the pasta before I start everything else. I always start making the sauce and such and then start cooking the pasta. Otherwise pasta is done before everything else. Also set the temperature of the oven as first step, 
I do it later when I think I have few minutes left making the recipe. And whisking egg yolk before whisking egg white. I do it the other way around. Otherwise the egg white could get contaminated with the fatty parts of egg yolk and it won't get fluffy. There are two ways you're supposed to make tomato based pasta sauce. Either slow cook it or heat just until hot. Some thin jura the about acids not being good for any medium time. I, of course, opt for the fast way. Even sauce from scratch I start immediately after putting the water on to boil. Timing is perfect. Measuring seasonings. My ancestors will tell me when it is enough. I hate it when recipe writers assume everyone wants to limit their salt. Some of us are urged by our doctors to eat as much as possible. Even half of people with heart disease aren't salt reactive and don't need to cut back. I am never ever boiling my tomatoes and skinning them to make a sauce. The very definition of extra. I used to do that but what works better is just cutting them in half and grating on a box grater. Skin gets left behind. If you don't want a lot of seeds, cut through the equator of the tomato and gently squeeze the seeds out, then grate them. Boom. Adding only a little vanilla extract, I'll just pour until my heart's content. I'm the same, and I have discovered Mexican vanilla is amazing. Way better than extract. I don't sift the flour. I know that the measurements for solids and liquids are different, but I use the wrong cups anyway. This is usually fine, but you might find trouble with baked goods. I restructure baking recipes to use a single bowl. I start with liquids, add in the sugars and seasonings, add in baking soda powder, then flour. I've never had a problem, but I also move quickly. The only time I need a second bowl is if I have to fold in some stiff peaked egg whites. Preheat oven to 350 then start making the recipe. That way, my oven would be on for a long time before I even finished making the recipe. Using room temperature eggs for baking when a recipe calls for that. I'll soften butter in the microwave when softened butter is called for, but eggs are going in straight from the refrigerator. I had a friend ask me what my secret was for a recipe that nobody else could pull off like I could. I told her I did all the tricks, properly softened butter, room temp eggs, sifted flour, etc etc etc. She just waved me off, said that didn't work, and continues to bake like shit even today. I don't normally do all those things, but do at least try to be aware of my flour, and know when I need something to turn out perfectly. Those extra steps do add up. Let's sit then serve. We eating this right now. This is actually finishing cooking the dish. For things like roasts, it's important. Measuring out the water to cook any type of pasta. I don't need to measure, I just know. Or that you 6 liters nonsense. I put in water to the rivets of the handle, and that's perfect or overkill for everything. Preheat the oven air freer. I take so long prepping sometimes that my oven just sits preheated for so long. Not 100%, like I wouldn't do this for gumbo, but if a soup recipe calls for adding flour as a thickener roux in the beginning that recipe probably derives from a time when flour was the only available thickener. I'll skip that step and add a cornstarch slurry at the end. It's more predictable, harder to screw up, and affects the overall flavor of the soup less. Roux thickened and starch thickened liquids have noticeably different textures though, 